Davina here and welcome to the third part of creating a cutout profile. As this is the final tutorial in the GIMP series, Caroline and I wanted to show how GIMP and Inkscape can work together when you're creating graphics. I'm going to import the cutout I made in GIMP into Inkscape to make a Google icon. If you've missed our Inkscape series, go to our fan page, the address is below, and click on the Welcome Page tab to get the videos. OK, we're now in the Inkscape window, and what we're going to do is create this Google icon. I'm going to get rid of that now, and click on it, and what I've done is brought two images in, a Google icon which I've downloaded from the website and you will have access to this uh, along with uh, the video that you are watching. And also I've downloaded the cutouts that I made in GIMP. You will have done your own, you don't want to use Caroline obviously. So what we're going to do is put Caroline onto this one. But there's a couple of things we need to do first with the Google icon. If I select it and bring it to the front, which is this one here, if I put it against Caroline, you'll notice that there is a white background. Because it was saved in JPEG, JPEG always put a white background, and that will not be any good for the web or a document, unless you do want a white background. So I'm going to show you a very quick and easy way to remove that white background in Inkscape. The first thing I'm going to do is magnify it a couple of times so that we can see what we're doing. So click on there twice. Next, go and click on the select, sorry, the rectangle tool and just inside the icon draw a square like that. I'm going to make it black and I'm also going to just push it a little bit to the edges. Don't push it beyond because you'll be picking up the white then. But we'll do it like that. And we need now to select this one and the back one and to do that I'm going to reduce the magnification because we do want a bit of room. Click on select, holding the shift key down, click and drag and you will see that there are two lines which means both back and top object are selected. Go up to object, come to clip and set. And what's happened is that black square has acted as a mask and preserved the inside and everything outside it has been removed. So this is a very quick and easy way to remove backgrounds from simple objects. But of course, if you want to do something like this one, which is much more fiddly, that's where GIMP comes into its own. And you can see that the two programs do work well together. So we've got rid of the background, the white bit, and to show you, you can see, can't you, it's gone. We've now got to put this profile into here. Let's bring it to the front and click on that one. Well, that's a little bit too big. So holding the control down, let's preserve the proportions and that should be okay. But what I want to do is to get rid of the G plus symbol because as you can see it's sticking out from behind her and I want to put it somewhere else. So I'm going to magnify again and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cover up the G with a rectangle. I'm going to keep it blue to show you why and just click and draw inside. What I want to do is to make sure the 
blue is the same colour as this black here. And I think I will magnify. And the way to do that is to go down to the dropper tool. The blue is selected and click on there. Now, don't ask me why it's become opaque or transparent. Don't know why. But I've just clicked inside and clicked again. And we've now got black. If we take off the selection, this bit's OK. So what I'm going to do is click on there and I'm just going to move this. And that's not too bad at all. But of course, if we move that, we're now leaving the black square behind. So the two need to be merged together. And I'm going to go Control Z to undo that action. Reduce the magnification again. And it's as we did before. Select, hold down Shift, click and drag outside. And you have two selections. Go up to the icon here, Group Selected Objects, and click or Control G. And we now have one object. I'm going to turn this around 90 degrees counterclockwise and we go up to this one here and it should come up in a minute. Rotate selection, click on there, oh, got that. The next thing to do is to bring the profile in and bring her to the front, just still a little bit too big. So we reduce That's fine. I now want to put the G plus sign into the picture. So we go to the text tool, click on the screen and type in G plus. The default is sans and I want to change it to cattle. There it is. Now cattle is the font that Google use. It may be on your computer, if not, put it into Google search and it's a free download. If you have a Mac, make sure it is saved into or installed into the user's font folder. If you have a PC, then it will need to go into the font file in Windows because Inkscape will only use what fonts you have available on your computer. Another tip, once you have downloaded it to your computer, if Inkscape is open, you will need to save your work and save it in SVG and close down Inkscape because it won't be able to use the font until you reopen it. OK, so we have done the typing and I'm going to move it in. And of course, you can't see it on there, but if we do it there and I'm going to change the colour to white and move it up to there. <coughs> Excuse me. Holding the sh control key down, I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. And pop it there. And there you have your Google profile icon or whatever you want to call it. You'll need to save your work. And we're going to remember to pop it in the page box. And in order to do that, we must group it all together. So click on select, shift, and make sure everything's grouped together. So there's the background, the G plus and the picture. Go up to and click on group selected objects. And now you can move it into the box. 
And what this means is that you can actually see the profile picture in a preview window if you've saved it in the box. We can reduce I'm not going to here, but you can reduce the page size if you want to. So remember, we have to go up to File and Save As. In the first instance, save it as SVG because that is preserving the vector image. And if you want to come back and make this a bigger uh, picture for a poster or even an A1 sheet, you will need it to be in SVG so that it doesn't pixelate and then you can uh, save it as a PNG afterwards. So wherever you're going to save it, give it a name and SVG. I'm not going to uh, do that because I've already got it. And that is the end of both the video series. We hope that we've helped to explain how GIMP works. If you have any questions, any comments, any suggestions, maybe, um, we would love to hear from you. And if you come to our fan page, the address is below, you will meet some very nice people. Uh, come and join the community. We'd love to hear from you. So it's goodbye from me, Davina, and goodbye from Caroline, and we hope to see you again in the future. Bye-bye.